and we are live. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this LinkedIn live session. This is Kalyani and I work as a program officer at CRB, the Center for Responsible Business. Today we are bringing this LinkedIn live session as part of CRB's seventh annual flagship conference, India and Sustainability Standards, ISS 2020, which will be taking place from October 20th to 30th. Today's LinkedIn live session will discuss in detail the vision and the mission of World Benchmarking Alliance, and also talk about the conference session, enabling policy implementation for promoting responsible business in India, which is being co-hosted by CRB and WBA, and is scheduled for 30th October from 3.45 to 5.15 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So without any further delay, let us welcome Vijit Singh Gupta, the Chief Executive Officer at CRB, and Namit Agarwal, the Asia Policy Lead for World Benchmarking Alliance, to tell us more. Thank you, Kalyani, and welcome, uh, Namit. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for all our colleagues and friends who joined us here today. Um, as you're all aware, the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, offers a great opportunity for businesses to get actively engaged in the sustainability agenda uh, from a social, economic, and environmental perspective. Um, and with five years down the line, uh, and also the fact that the, the we, we are calling it this, the, the decade of action on SDGs, it is very critical to understand the contribution that businesses have made using that opportunity that the SDGs have presented in creating those impacts. Um, and one of the organizations that we've been in touch with and we are seeing that they're doing excellent work across the world is the World Benchmarking Alliance. And the World Benchmarking Alliance, which, uh, which is represented by our friend, uh, good friend uh, Namit Agarwal here, who heads the policy uh, work of the WBA in, in Asia. Uh, we will hear from Namit about the World Benchmarking Alliance and the, and, and the purpose of the organization and how it has been working uh, really to, uh, to measure uh, the impact and, uh, that companies have had on SDGs and really to motivate uh, companies to, to sort of move in that direction. So welcome once again, Namit. Uh, very, uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining us uh, for this session. Um, if I may ask uh, you with a, the first question uh, to give your thoughts and also to inform uh, our viewers about the World Benchmarking Alliance, you know, how did it come into being? Uh, what is the work that it has been doing and really the vision and the mission of the organization? Uh, if you can share that with our, with our audience, that'd be great. Thanks, uh, Rijit and Kalyani for having me here and uh, working with WBA in, in our journey. Uh, as, as we walk uh, together. So uh, we, we started two years ago in 2018 in the Netherlands, uh, looking at uh, the gaps that exist, existed then and also to a lot of uh, degree exist uh, till today on the accountability of private sector on the sustainable development goals. We all know that for the world to achieve the SDGs by 2030, there is a very important role of the private sector uh, without which we will not be able to achieve this. So WBA came into existence to look at what is the real contribution, what is the real impact that the private sector can have uh, in achieving the SDGs and having some sort of an accountability mechanism which is global and universal, looks at all industries and sectors. So we work at the intersection of SDGs and responsible business. And we have identified uh, seven systems transformations, uh, which we believe are crucial to look at the impact and role of private sector. And we also I have identified 2000 keystone companies and these are global companies. And over a period of time, we want to assess these 2000 companies across uh, the seven transformations on what's going well, what's not going well and what needs to change. As you mentioned, Rigid, that I mean, this is the decade of action. Uh, we, as WBA, we are adding to this uh, by calling this the decade of transparency and accountability for the private sector. 
it is absolutely important that globally businesses become more transparent and then help uh, in becoming more accountable to uh, definitely the society and in environment but also the wider stakeholders uh, that the impact uh, in in various ways so that in a in a brief is why we exist and uh, what are we trying to do sure thanks a lot for that overview and uh, you know it i think it is uh, it is a no brainer now uh, that there is also a business case in 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 promoting sdgs for um, for businesses uh, given the amount of uh, you know the given the amount of technical financial and even policy support that businesses are expected to get uh, you know globally uh, as they transform uh, their business model and their uh, operations uh, to to be able to uh, capture their impact on specific sdgs and also document that uh, in in in, uh, in in their in their uh, you know endeavor uh, to 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 create sustainable societies um, tell us a little bit about you know if you may uh, uh, the work that wba has been doing specifically uh, in this region or uh, if you could also share uh, you know some of the future um, ideas and activities that you have already lined up perhaps in india and or, and also in this region and what uh, what are some ways in which uh, you know businesses and other stakeholders can uh, become engaged with this journey that you have started uh, you know in netherlands in two years ago uh, and of course now uh, uh, in this in this region um, so if you can tell us a little bit about you know your plans now in this region uh, whatever you've done already and also how businesses who are interested uh, to be part of this uh, movement really um uh, and you know this is the alliance so world benchmarking alliance already has a number of members and of course crb has been a member of the wba uh, since the last couple of years so if you can tell us a little bit about uh, that uh, over to you namu thanks rijit for that question and as you mentioned wba is an alliance so and and today we have uh, close to about 160 allies uh, from across the world uh, a lot of them are from india and definitely uh, from the asia region uh, so a lot of our engagement in the region and in india has been with the allies uh, we have our allies meeting we have several initiatives uh, where our allies join uh, like yourselves and the idea is uh, to get uh, our priorities and our work defined by the allies what are the key priorities that wba should pursue and what are uh, the ground level uh, insights that our allies share is a crucial part of how wba is able to design its uh, engagement and uh, program so i think that is a very very crucial part and that has been happening across the world uh, but definitely some very very active allies like uh, yourselves and and a few others uh, from india and our allies are uh, civil society organization investors business associations Uh, and and some consulting agencies think tank etc and uh, in in addition to this we engage with a lot of the companies that are within the scope of our various benchmarks i mentioned that we work on seven uh, systems transformations every transformation has one or many benchmarks or spotlight uh, in indexes for example we have something called the corporate human rights benchmark which which has which is one of our most mature uh, benchmarks and that looks at a range of global companies and publishes uh, the scorecard similarly other benchmarks and spotlight uh, in indices are also doing the same and that involves a lot of engagement with the companies that are part of the benchmark that we assess through calls and uh, having their feedback in in the entire process so that one level of engagement that we have been doing in asia with the companies that are part of these benchmarks in addition once the benchmark is published uh, or when we are designing the methodology we do a lot of consultations we have been doing a series of consultations across our corporate human rights benchmark digital uh, inclusion benchmark uh, recently the financial systems uh, transformation where we invite uh, a, a wide range of participants uh, civil society companies investors and the government 
to give us inputs in the methodology uh, for us to present what are the key findings of our benchmark so that next steps can be designed uh, in with some of those stakeholders for example uh, in this week on the 21st uh, we are going to organize a consultation with cii which is targeted to the financial sector as we are designing our financial uh, systems benchmark we want to get a sense of what are the key priorities of the financial sector in india and that will help us in designing our methodology and then with crb on the 30th we are doing this policy collab which i will uh, talk in more detail uh, slightly later but i mean those are immediate opportunities of engaging and working with uh, the wba and uh, obviously it's an open alliance an alliance of the willing so anybody who is willing to join us uh, as an ally is more than welcome to uh, join us and you can reach out to me or rajit i'm sure we can help you out with the processes sure no thanks for that uh, and uh, i think what is also important and you touched on that maybe you know we can have um, a couple of minutes of more discussion on the use and the utility of the benchmark you know you of course one process is to uh, you know get the methodology right and get the benchmark uh, in order and then the other uh, important uh, and the most important perhaps uh, uh sort of uh you know activity especially for wba and allies uh, like ourselves is to then use that benchmark uh to engage with uh, various stakeholders and see how we can really move the needle forward so uh, if you can share a little bit about uh you know what has been some of those experiences uh, of engaging and using the benchmark um, maybe uh, in other parts of the world because i know that you're still about starting here uh, but you might already have some experiences of uh, you know using those industry benchmarks uh, and what has been the the experience uh, about uh, uh, that that application of those benchmarks so if you can share some light there absolutely rajit and i completely agree that i mean a benchmark or the data is of no use if people are not using it effectively and for wb our benchmarks and data are all uh, public Uh, so everything is on our website uh, with the methodology and details and everything and we have seen some good examples uh, mostly from europe where there have been a lot of action uh, especially from the investor community uh, and investor networks have actually used our uh, data and our findings uh, to either engage with companies better and recently uh, after our chrb 2019 uh, assessment Uh, an investor network in in and it's a global investor network which basically looked at the gap in terms of human rights due diligence and the and the lack of it among some of the biggest companies they they wrote a letter uh, an open letter inviting all the companies and everybody to kind of take this seriously the other important user of the data is definitely the governments and we've had some successful engagement and ongoing engagement at the european union level where i'm sure you would know uh, there are a lot of uh, legislations and policies being discussed whether it's uh, human rights due diligence or non financial reporting and uh, we are fortunate that uh, a lot of our insights research are being uh, leveraged and used and discussed in those processes and in in some of those committees we are also part of uh, the committee so that we can contribute and i think those two are absolutely crucial in terms of uh, the investor influence and the policy influence to make sure that we are able to move the needle apart from this uh, the civil society is a very very important uh, stakeholder which can look at their own region their own specific uh, topics and what are the companies doing or not doing and then in their own engagement with companies or governments uh, try to bring about uh, that change so that i would say is where we are and we've seen investor civil society and government engagement with our benchmarks great i mean that this is very interesting because i think you know what you pointed out uh, just to finish up this conversation i think from what i understand what you just said uh, there is possibility in the benchmark also to carve out some parts of it which is relevant for a particular region and then to use that data uh to engage uh you know uh, because if it's a it's a it's an mnc and you are doing a benchmark for them uh, it will also include 
the entire uh, sort of network uh, or the global uh, value chain of the of that MNC. So there will be possibly ways to disaggregate that data region wise and see what uh, you know how that data can be used. I think this is very very interesting, and also uh, I think at a macro level. Um, is not tra trade is transboundary right. uh, trade and investment and commerce is transboundary you know whatever happens in the eu will have implications on uh, india or the region here so uh, you know i think uh, whatever discussions are happening uh, in brussels and uh, all of that will also be interesting for organizations businesses uh, you said you talked about think tanks uh, here in the region to be aware of those um, because there will be implications. Uh, um, so that's that's very good to know. I think uh, different organizations will have uh, different things to uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, benefit from, if I may, from this benchmark. So that's, that's very, very useful to know. And I think that is really the power of uh, the, the benchmark and the alliance that it sort of rallies around it. Now, to come down to our sort of partnership and the work that you know CRB and WBA has have been doing, um, you have uh, crafted out a very interesting session in the forthcoming conference, uh, which we are going to have on the 30th of November of October. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the the vision, you know, and the overall purpose of this session, and what is it uh, that you are uh, aiming to, you know, get out of it, um, especially for um, us to also rally a wider policy stakeholder community around uh, the work that WBA is planning to do in India uh, now and, and going forward. So over to you, Namit, for that. Thanks for this question again, Rajit. So uh, this, this is a new initiative that WBA has taken up and we call it Policy Collective Learning and Action or Policy Collabs. And the idea is that we uh, at a different level. So uh, at Asia level, at EU level or at a global level, we will pick up certain very, very pertinent policy topics and invite stakeholders, multi stakeholders to come together for a period of say about four to six months and then try to address some of those issues and come up with recommendations for the government or other stakeholders as the case may be. So um, the India Policy Collab is the first uh, of the series that we are launching at your uh, conference on October 30th. And in India, when we spoke to uh, some of the stakeholders, what we realized is one of the major policy challenges uh, in, in, in the responsible business space is that of policy implementation. We already have a lot of policies in place, uh, but implementation is always a challenge. So therefore the idea was to spend an amount of time uh, about four to six months uh, with some experts, to try and address, uh, first identify what are those implementation challenges and then uh, come up with some alternatives and solutions that can be shared with the government and the wider uh, stakeholders. So on the 30th, we, we will have about 15, 20 such experts trying to unpack some of those challenges and over a period of time, then uh, take it forward to uh, some sort of a conclusion uh, and, and recommendation. And that is the idea that, I mean, uh, we as a single organization will never be able to come up with the solution, but working with allies like CRB uh, in India uh, and bringing in other experts on board, we can co-create some of those ideas and we can play a facilitative role uh, in that process. So. So that's in brief about uh, the October 30th um, uh, roundtable session that we have. Great, thanks uh, Namit for that overview. And I think, uh, you know, one of the critical things, again, uh, you know, tying back to what you mentioned earlier about the application, the usability of the benchmark, I think it is very, very critical to have that kind of a multi-stakeholder mix in this conversation. You know, you talked about the industry, the policy makers, uh, civil society organizations, think tanks, even the international community, and um, and and I think you know that's exactly how you set up the session. Um, so, 
you you mentioned that the idea would be that uh, you know from the session certain uh, certain key initiatives or well certain key ideas will uh, will be will be highlighted uh, specifically pertaining to the implementation of uh, policies and uh, if i can unpack the you know the word policy because it is uh, you know sometimes means everything and nothing at, at the same time uh, i think basically what we are what what you are going to be doing uh, and what you know we have discussed also is that you're going to talk about not only the macro level overall policy regime uh, and there has been a fair bit of attraction and forward movement on on that in terms of promoting responsible business so through, through the first the national voluntary guidelines some time ago and now the national uh, guidelines on responsible business conduct in india i mean in in, in india is india is probably one of the few countries uh, in the among emerging economies which has taken this uh, this role forward and kudos to the to the ministry of affairs and others involved in doing this um the framework of promoting responsible business and quality disclosure but it is also about the various policies at the national and even state level which have implication on how businesses behave right. uh, and 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 when you said that you know implementation is at uh, an, an area uh, where you would be focusing on um, are there certain criteria or uh, sort of you know broad framework that you are thinking of uh, you know to to maneuver this extremely complicated mesh of uh, of policies and legislative instruments and and all of that sure i completely agree at the macro level i mean we have uh, for example the national guidelines on responsible business conduct and uh, its reporting framework but in terms of implementation at not just at the state level but at the block level at the district level uh, and and because ours is a very informal economy uh, so looking at what kind of labor uh, imp- uh, labor rights implementation mechanisms exist and how can that be connected with the ngrbc and help in co- basically implementing the vision that has been set out in the ngrbc so i think it's a it, it's definitely coming from uh, the grassroots until and unless we are able to suggest implementation solutions at that level uh, at a central level union level the ngrbc or those you know vision document will never be implemented so that is the objective uh, let's let's not uh, you know get uh, uh, distracted with just big policies at the uh, union level but making sure that the implementation mechanism the government machinery at uh, the absolute local level is aligned with those processes if there are awareness gaps how do we address those awareness gaps similarly for example if you look at uh, various environment mechanisms whether it's the pollution control system how do you make sure that there is awareness and there are uh, you know necessary alignments between what's di- being discussed at the macro level but what actually gets implemented at the micro level so i think that's the gap that we hope to uh, address in in some sense but i mean the problem is huge so i am not sure if we'll be able to completely solve the problem but at least move in that direction no it's great and i'm also conscious of not letting the cat out uh, of the bag uh, already but i think uh, this is very useful and it will also probably interest some of our viewers and listeners who are with us here today um so yeah we we are very excited and very happy to have uh, you know you and colleagues uh, uh, from the world benchmarking alliance and to be working with you on this extremely important and uh, and challenging agenda and also to have you uh, with us um, hosting this session uh, which we hope that will create some sort of a, an engagement opportunity for us uh, uh, going forward and also try uh, and see how we can unpack the complicated uh, mesh of um, policy and, and legal instruments that we have uh, being a federal country so thank you very much uh, uh, namit for your time always a pleasure to speak to you 
Uh, any any parting thoughts from you, uh, and then we can turn it over to Kalyani. Thanks, thanks, Rajiv. Thanks, Kalyani, for this. I think this is really important for us this session. And I would just say that I mean, inviting everyone to join this session and work with us and and co-create some of these solutions. Thanks, CRB, for having me here. Thank you, Rajiv and Namit. It has been interesting to know about the work of WBA and the role of benchmarks and data. I'm looking forward to unpacking and then define these existing gaps that need to be addressed and finding policy pathways to, through this collab especially, to unlock business sector's contribution to the SDGs. Please join us on 30th October, 3.45 p.m. for taking this discussion forward. Thank you for joining us and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.